Right, good afternoon, everyone. How are we doing today? We are here with Laurie Wilson, ex Stephen, who's right back slash right mid as well. Played both. Um, so, how are you doing, Laurie? You okay, mate? I'm very good, thank you. You're probably best just calling me Mr. Utility. Yeah, um, okay. Well, we, 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 <laughs> rather we will, than one position. Yeah, we will from now on. Um, the, the utility, <laughs> man. Um, but no, so we'll crack on really. We'll, we'll start pretty much straight away. So why did you join up with Steamage in the first place? What were your sort of main reasons behind that? Well, actually, I was um, I was at Colchester um, and I wasn't getting a new contract at Colchester. And I was offered to come and train um, with, a, with a view basically of a contract there to be offered. Um, turned up. I was a little bit sceptical, obviously, because I'd gone from Colchester being in the championship um to coming down to Stevenage and I was like I'm not sure what to do but my agent at the time we had a very close connection with um Stimo and um he basically was just like look you know if you're going to go to the conference Stevenage is a great club to be at they're doing very well very well at the time as well because it was midway through the season um so yeah so basically I I, I, was, I sort of jumped it and thought you know it's a great chance to come and play and uh, that was that really yeah, so you mentioned that you um, were signed by Stimo. What was it like playing under him? What was he like as a gaffer? It was good. It, you know, they um, it was a it was a very close knit squad as well. When I first signed, um, you had the likes of um, Nutter, you had Jules, you had Adam Miller, Martin. Like it, it was, it was a great, great squad. It was for me being a young lad, it was quite, it was good to come into because you kind of to being in man's football um, as such. So it, it, was, it, was a nice, it was a nice environment to be at. And, you know, Stimo was a very good coach. Um, you know, obviously the, the fact that they were doing so well as well and he ended up getting his move to, to Gillingham as well. So um, it was good to be around. Yeah, and obviously um, that was the, the first one that you worked under, but you also worked under Graham for a number of years as well. Um, what were the sort of main differences between them two as a manager? And obviously, you know, Graham was the manager that you were sort of most successful under as well with the, the promotions? Yeah, so, I mean, they're, they're very probably polar opposite. I would probably go along the lines of saying. Um, but they, um, the difference between them, obviously Graham was very much more to do with the psychological side of football, not just the performances on the pitch. It was kind of the outside outside and, and getting into your mind and, doing all the other bits as well. Whereas um, Stimo was very much just football minded, um, you know, and the, the, the other side of, of the game was kind of left to your own own do really. Um, but it worked for the players that we had with Mark Simpson. It, it worked very well because they were the type of players that didn't really, you know, worry about the outside of football. They just used to perform on the pitch. So all the other stuff was kind of just a bonus for them. Whereas the squad that we had with Graham was very much, um, he kind of had a vision further than just that season. You know, it was more about the, the seasons to follow. Um, so, yeah, so he had to make sure that he had the right mentality with every player, that everyone was in the right sort of position. Um, so, yeah, so it, it was very, very different, but they both were successful at that time. And then we've got a message here from Rai that's in the chat as well. Uh, what is your favourite position to play? You played sort of right back, right mid. Uh, what's your sort of favourites out of those two? Or, you know, maybe you played, I think you played left mid a couple of times as well. And... Yeah. <laughs> I think I played left back in the final. Left back in the uh, final. At Wembley, yeah. I think, at one stage. Um, so the I'd probably say at Stevenage, um, my favourite position would have been right wing. Um, as I've got a little bit older, um, and I had a couple of seasons at Cholton at right mid, but towards the end at, at Cholton, I started to play right back. Um, and at Bolton, I played a lot more at right back. So I'd probably say now my favourite position is right back because I've had a longer stint playing in that position um, and understand the game a lot more in that position. Whereas when I was younger and you know up and down and, and, and doing all Graham's fitness regimes, um, I enjoyed right mid because I actually enjoyed playing you know, in front of Ronnie Henry as well, um, because he's a good talker and, you know, we, we, we benefited, we helped each other a lot going forward and defending. So it was quite a nice. 
Yeah, I was going to ask that about the, the sort of bond between you and Ron down the right-hand side as well. Um, it was pretty evident to see that, you know, that bond down the right-hand side between the two of you was quite evident on the pitch and off the pitch as well. Yeah, I mean, we we very we linked up very well and, you know, we both had an understanding that we help each other going forward and we help each other defending. Um, some would some would say that I've probably done 90, 90% of Ronnie's work um, <laughs> in the game, which has allowed him to, to carry on playing for so long. Um, but yeah, no, like, listen, I, I enjoyed it because, um, you know, Ronnie's a hard worker and, you know, we've, we've been together from the start. Um, you know, as soon as I came in, Ronnie was already here um, playing centre-back actually at the time for Stimo. So, you know, we, we went, we'd been through a lot together. So it was quite a nice, you know, we, we worked hard together. It was good. And people forget that Ronnie started off at centre-back as well. Um, yeah. and then, he, then, he, then he moved to the, the right-back position. So, yeah, people forget he was actually a centre-back um, under Stimo. He was very good. He was, yeah, he was a very good centre-back as well, you know, um, obviously from Spurs at the time as well. He, he was, he was very comfortable. Um, he's playing a lot more there now, I think, for Billericke. Um, you know, I think he's uh, the, the pace has gone a little bit now <laughs> for, the, for down the side. But, yeah, no, it's, he's, um, he's doing really well and he's very comfortable on the ball and he has been, which is why he's been able to play for so long. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, you uh, were there for Ronnie's testimonial at the end of last season as well. So what was that like as an occasion to get together with everybody and to kind of... That was that was, that was fantastic, that was, to be honest. It, um, it's kind of one of those things where, you know what it's like when you've got a group of friends and you end up not seeing each other for, for years and years and years and, and most, of, most of the time, which is actually quite a sad situation, uh, you know, funerals and, and things like that really. Manage. We know we've spoken about it so many times. Oh, we should meet. We should do this. We should do that. But it never kind of transpires. So it was very nice to be able to get everybody together um, and have some sort of reminiscing and, and have Graham in the in the changing room as well, going through some old things. Um, you know, and to go out there and play as well. It was it was fantastic. And the day couldn't have gone any better, really. Either. Obviously, Ronnie scored as well. Uh, but then his little one come on and scored the winner. So it was, you know, a nice day all round for the, the Henry family. So Exactly. And it was it was very fitting, very fitting for them. Yeah. So let's uh, touch on a few other things there. So um, I've mentioned it already that you played a big part in the club's promotions from the conference and through League Two as well. Um, so what was it like sort of, you know, go, going up through the two divisions? Um, do you know what it was? It, it was it was hard in the sense of when I look back now, you know, it was hard in the fact that we were training the hours we were training, and you know, there was a lot of kind of players would, would moan that we were training this long and stuff. But because we were being so successful every week, it was it was very hard to kind of stop doing what we were doing, even though we would moan about it. It was always like, well, actually, you're winning, so. You just kept you just kept doing the same things week in week out, and you know it. It actually ended up being, you know, quite. Or people say it's really hard, but it was actually quite an easy situation to be in because of. I think it was probably down a lot to the players that that Graham had brought in and the mentality that he had brought in that we were able to be yeah, as one and, and and be very solid together as a team. A very uh, sort of you know, if you look at the squad that were there. Um, you look at the, the sort of back five, for example, and how solid they were towards the end of the season with Daisy and yeah. uh, Ron and yeah. Robbo and Ash and, and Scott. Um, you can see, you know, just how talented those those players are. And, you know, they just, yeah, you know, to, to a man, they just put on a sh- put in a shift every week. Yeah, it, that, that was kind of it, to be honest with you. It, it was, it got to a stage really where each individual knew their jobs and knew exactly what it was going to take to to get out there on the pitch. I mean, the you know, the, there's always a saying that, you know, you work work hard on the on the field, on the training field and make it easier on a Saturday. And I think that was very evident in, in our time at Stevenage with Graham, that we would probably work two, three, four times harder than we would do on a match day. 
and during the week. So when a match day did come, it, it became very, you know, just general, easy, oh, this is just another kind of session, um, like another training session, because it wasn't as hard as actually training. So I think that was built in each player. And uh, yeah, it helped a lot on the field, I think. Yeah, I'm losing you a bit in terms of signal. I don't know, it kind of can get a bit jumpy. I don't know whether that's going to rise here as well in the in the stream there. Um, but uh, I don't know, it seems to be losing signal ever so, ever so slightly. Sorry, I've got you again. Yeah. So let me carry on with what I was uh, what I was saying anyway. Um, so when you were uh, yeah okay I'll carry on anyway. So when you were um, playing at Stevenage, you also played. All right, we'll uh, we'll get Laurie back in a minute. We just lost in there. Signal was going out uh, in and out. Um, not too sure what was actually happening. So we'll we'll try and grab him in a minute. Um, but uh, we'll see what we're going to do with that because, uh, you know, it's very interesting to hear stories from him anyway um, in regards to his time at the club. And uh, hopefully, let's see if he's going to come back on here now. Um, just as his uh, device is not connected at the moment, so we just have to wait for that. But hopefully it uh, won't be too long um, coming back onto to stream now. Um, let me just uh, send him a little message, in fact. Um, just to see what's going on. Because um, it still says his device is not connected. Uh, but anyway, we'll, uh, we'll get him back on. It's quite interesting, as I said, to, to hear the stories between uh, the, the players. Obviously, we've spoken to Robbo and we've spoken to Lady already from that side. Um, we're going to hopefully have a few more. Uh, Luke Foster was in, you know, in that side as well. Um, David Bridges was a part of that side sometimes as well. Um, he played against uh, York in the, the final game of the season and scored the winner there. Um, so there's a few of them that we're trying to speak to from the promotion winning side, um, the side that went up through League Two, um, as well as the conference, winning the conference. So um, hopefully uh, we'll get Laurie back shortly. But um, in the meantime, just bear with us, guys. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, you know, we're going to have hopefully have a few more interviews. I'm in talks with Robin Troot still, um, in talks with Peter Wynn as well in regards to getting him uh, on stream. Um, and of course, we'll talk to him about the, the FA Cup game against Newcastle as well, uh, which we'll hopefully speak to Laurie about when we can get him back, um, as well as the games against Spurs and the uh, League One games that he took part in um, against the likes of Bournemouth and Sheffield United, who are up there in the Premier League now as well, uh, and Sheffield Wednesday as well, who are obviously doing all right in the Championship. So uh, we'll uh, have a look at hopefully um, a number of things there. Prepared all this. And there you go. It's because it's, it's number 13, isn't it? It's, then there you go. It's that's just the luck. Um, yeah, it's because it's the first team interview that we're doing. So uh, there we go. He said it was unlucky for some. It's obviously unlucky for him um, because it's just decided it didn't want to work. Um, all the signals gone down, whatever. So we'll try and get it back when we can. But um, got another question there from from Rye, which we'll get to as well because obviously he wasn't just at Stevenage. He was also at uh, Bolton and Charlton and uh, a number of other teams higher up the the footballing pyramid as well. So uh, we'll look at some of those questions too. Um, but in the meantime, um, just bear with us and uh, we'll hopefully get him on again very soon. So uh, do I need a new link? No, that's fine. Same one should be fine. Uh, um, so let's have a look. Yeah, he's, he's just messaged me saying... Uh, that his internet's gone down and just wants to know if he needs a new link, but because we're already on stream and we're still live, it uh, should be completely fine to use the same one. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see. But uh, there's lots of questions there anyway. Um, if you've got a question, obviously you can use this to uh, um, get those questions in via the chat box there as well. And uh, it gives you a little bit longer to, to think up some questions that you might want to ask him. Um, before we can get him back again, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll ask them live on the stream when uh, we can get him back. But let's just see what's going on there now. Yeah, so um, that's all right. Hopefully, it won't be too long. Um, 
let me just look at Twitter as well because he uh, was speaking to me on both. Let's just see what's going on there. He just sent me a message on there as well. Okay, that was from before. Um, so yeah, if uh, Ryan, do you want to pop up a minute and uh, we can uh, just have a little chat until he comes on? Um, because it's uh, it's difficult knowing what to say when you're on your own. You you're sort of being left on your own a minute. Um, just waiting to see how long it's going to take him. I'm not on camera. But That's I'm right. Not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's difficult to know what to say when obviously uh, we've lost yeah. him now. So, it, um, yeah. <laughs> unfortunate. But um, you will get Laurie back. I mean, it's, it's signal issues happen yeah. today, today. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, he, I told you it's because it's uh, stream number thirteen. It's uh, yeah, it unlucky, the unlucky 13. one. It's the unlucky one. That's why. <laughs> but let's hope you can get him back in. Um, let's just see what he's saying. Is uh... it seemed a bit interesting, even though I'm not Stephen Edge through and through like yeah. you. Are. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I like to listen to stories of professionals that have played in the game because it gives you that buzz. If Absolutely, you... yeah. Um, and if you know a little bit about it as well, um, the you know, you probably followed the side um a little bit through the promotions from the uh you know conference and, and league two. I think you went to a few games, in fact, as well down in, in your area, Devon. You went to a few games, didn't you? So yeah, I think we actually crossed path paths. Yeah. Because I think we got relegated. Because it was 2010-11, the mm-hmm. playoff season in League Two for you. Yeah, and I think w- that was the season we got relegated from League t- League One. Yeah, so I think we actually played. Did we play each other? I think we probably did. Uh, no, times. no, because we would have. I think. Well, the first time... I don't know because Laurie was there for how many years? Was there? I think he was there for five or six years. So uh, he might have done. Um. It looks like he was here for five years from yeah. 2007 to 2012. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And I don't think we actually played Jews until 2014 when Dean Smalley scored that late-minute penalty in the 90-plus fifth minute. Yeah. Now, Laurie will be back shortly, so just give him a few minutes. He's just doing a restart, I think, on his machine, his um, internet and stuff. Um, or whatever he's got to do. So he said, or oh, he's just trying to sort things out there. So he won't be too long. He said, just give him a few minutes. And uh, obviously he sends his apologies for um, losing signal and stuff, but these things happen. So we'll just uh, make the best of what we can for the time being. And then, uh, yeah, we'll have, a, we'll have a chat general, um, general football. So, yeah, just uh, obviously you've seen him play in the championship a little bit as well. You know a little bit about his career at Bolton and, uh, Charlton. Um, he's actually commentating on some of the Charlton games at the moment as well. Uh, he was there, I think, for their game, was it two weeks ago or, or last week? Um, and uh, he was doing a little bit of commentary work for them as well. So uh, he was uh, with them for a while. They, you know, they still rate him and he was in the crowd, I think, as well. And or the, or the um, crowd was singing to him last season at one of the games. And, uh, you know. That seems really cool. Yeah. Hey, Mark. He's back. Let's uh, let's introduce Laurie Wilson back to the stream. Right. So, <laughs> you are right, mate. Yeah. Sorry, I've had to go on to my phone. Bloody! It's the only uh, only time that my internet has gone down in months. I told you it's because it's the uh, it's the first team stream. It's just that luck. I know. It's, yeah. It's just it's meant to be, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> sorry, Joe. Sorry. No, nah, that's all right, mate. Not to worry. These things happen. It's all good. Um, so what was I saying? We were talking a bit about the promotions under Graham, weren't we? Um, yes. From uh, the, the League Two and uh, through the conference as well. So what was that like to, to be involved in some, you know, big games, uh, playing at Old Trafford, for example, in the, the playoff final and the games at Accrington and the game, you know, when you knew that the, the trophy was coming back um, in the conference season and, you know, lifting it against York. What were those sort of games like? Um, yeah, they were. They were all obviously. They were all nice endings to such a an eventful season. So, like throughout the whole season, yeah, that's kind of what you build up for for those moments. But we, um, I mean, when I look back now, 
I cherish those moments a lot more than I did at the time because we kind of had a mentality I found or myself anyway, I can speak for myself is that it was kind of like, right onto the next one, onto the next one, because that's kind of the mentality we had as a, as a club and as players, we were always very much like, right, let's win the next game. Let's win the next game. Let's win the next game. Even though, even though we had won the league, it was kind of like, right, we want to win the next game. We want to win the next game. So for me, once we'd won the trophies, instead of, obviously you enjoy that, you know, day, two, week, maybe, <laughs> um, celebrating. But after that, it was very much like, right, what's the next goal? You know, should we, you know, let's go and win League Two. Let's go and win this. Let's go on an FA Cup run. So, yeah, it was always very much, you were always constantly looking for the next goal, even though you're you're doing great at that present moment in time. So it's not until afterwards that you look back and you reminisce and we have these chats now that you actually understand and, and appreciate those memories. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, yeah, you kind of got it there. You could see the momentum carrying on from winning the, the conference, going through League Two, even into League One as well, before Graham left to go to Preston. Yeah, that was, that was uh, the League the league One. I would say that the League One um, season, obviously with Graham leaving, was, um, was probably, I look back now and I probably think, what if? And, and it's a, and it's a very big what if, um, you know, it's, you, it's understandable that people move on, players move on, managers move on and want to achieve different stuff. But I just feel like it, another half a season and, you know, potentially if we had have gone up, um, he prob- they, Graham and, and any player probably would have had the pick of any club they wanted. Um, but they wouldn't have gone anywhere because, you know, we would have been in the championship. So, yeah, no, that, that of... makes complete sense. Obviously, if you look at um, teams that have, you know, gone up through the leagues, there isn't that many. Um, no. from, from League One, yeah, we, we ended up playing Bournemouth and I think you scored against Bournemouth, did you, as well? Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, Sheffield United and Sheffield Wednesday and teams like that that are now sort of Premier League Championship sort of teams. Um, yeah. But going through all of the divisions, it, you know, it takes some doing, especially from the conference as well. I just, I just think that we, we had something, you know, extremely special there, um, and you know, you look at the likes of Sheffield United now, um, with a few players that potentially we would have added maybe in that January window, um, in League One, and then if we would have gone up, you know, the players we would have added for the Championship, like who knows. Um, you know, it was a great run at that time. It just would have been nice for, you know, it all to stay together and finish the season off and then see where we kind of all all were at the end of that year. You know, I think even looking back now, even if we hadn't have done very well in League One, I think Graham and the coaching staff probably still would have been able to have the pick of another club. Um, but who knows? things change very quickly in football and sometimes you do have to, to make those decisions quickly. And then if you look back, you know, you can see even at the end of that season after Graham had left, uh, when Gary Smith come in as well, he was able to, to still get the club up into the playoffs and, you know, narrowly lose out to Sheffield United over the two legs by just that solitary goal as well. So, Well, that, that, that's, a, that's a credit really there. Um, because he he done he done very well coming in in the situation that that he was put into, um, especially with a lot of you know Graham sort of ethos and players and and stuff um, to come in and and do what we done was was credit kind of really to him because he did just steady the ship it could have it could have turned you know totally the opposite way and, and sunk but he actually did steady the ship. Um, and kind of just carried on with the way that we were working. You know, he didn't change too much. Um, and that was a credit to him, really, and, and a credit to us that we still achieved, you know, a, a good sort of playoff place. And who knows, we, you know, you look back now, we, we may, may have changed things. Exactly, yeah. And, you know, you've mentioned there, um, under Graham and under Gary as well, there was a couple of good FA Cup runs, um, games against Newcastle, beating them, 
uh, taking Spurs to the replay and, and going one 0 up at White Hart Lane with Jogs penalty. So, what were those games like playing? You know, uh, a part in them, and especially down that right hand side for you as well, coming up against the likes of Gareth Bale. <laughs> yeah, no, they were um, they they were amazing um, memories as well. You know, the the Newcastle game sits um, sits very very high up in, in in you know in my sort of looking back at some of the games that I've played in. Um, to achieve what we achieved on that that night, um, it was it was fantastic, really. And the top the Tottenham game was great to to be able to get a draw. I, I I don't see the Tottenham game as as big as the Newcastle game because obviously at the end of the day, I'm I don't like losing, and you know we lost, so it, I kind of look at that as a as a nice sort of day out as such. But it's a shame that we we actually couldn't have gone on and, and, and beaten them. Um, so the Newcastle game sits very fondly with me, for sure. And if you look at the Spurs game, we were unfortunate, even in the replay as well. Obviously, going 1 0 up, we had other chances. Uh, I think Ash had one, I think Robbo had one. Um, yeah, you know, we had a good we had a good few chances in that game. I think our chance, our main chance really was the game at home. Um, you know, so if we if we could have done a little bit more at the game at home, probably would have, you know, they they most Premier League teams probably take you for granted in that first game. The second game they, they know what's coming, they've done a little bit more research, they've seen a few more players and, and know how to beat you. Yeah, and then you know, you said about the Newcastle game, that was just a, a crazy game in general, obviously. Starting off so well, we were two 0 up within what was it about twenty minutes something 20 like that. Twenty minutes, I think. Yeah, no, that was uh, that was some game. That was it was it, that that game was very just surreal. That when you were playing in it, it was just a very surreal game. I didn't not at one point did I was I playing in that game thinking that I was playing against a Premier League team. It very much we had you know for Graham setting our mentalities and our mindsets that we were beating them regardless. So, you know, it didn't matter who we were playing. We we were winning that night. Um, so, yeah, so that was very surreal that it wasn't until kind of after the game and everybody on the pitch and, and all the press and everything that went on, it was kind of like, actually, oh, my God, we've just beaten a Premier League team sort of thing. So it wasn't until then that we actually realised what, what had kind of gone on. Um, and how much did the players sort of know about the games against Newcastle from previous and also, you know, in the promotion campaign as well, that the uh, club had already been, you know, promoted and won the league that time and weren't able to, uh, to go up due to the ground. Yeah, so obviously the, the good things with it is that you get a lot of, because of the press, the press look after that side of things. So they they bring those things to the forefront, don't they? You know, when, when you're in FA Cup runs, um, you get a lot of media attention when you're, a you know, a lesser team. So... You, they bring those sort of things up and, and they just start sort of going through. Graham also used to do a lot of uh, meetings in the mornings with us and he used to go through things like that. You know, that was his thing where he would go go home and, and research and do a lot of that stuff to make the players understand the situation they're in and, you know, w- what the club means, what the, what the you know, the city means, what the town means, you know, all those sort of things. Um, so he'd done a lot of that, which made it a, a lot more um, aware to us as players. Yeah, and you know, I'm sure that gave you that little bit of an extra edge as well. Actually, walking out onto the pitch come the end of the day, and you know, knowing that you want to do it, you know, for yourself and for the club, but you want to do it for those fans as well. Yeah, listen, the the, the fans in you know throughout those. Well, I mean, when I first come, you know, it was they they were good. As that, as those seasons went on and on, and you know they started, we had a, a, the same players every season. So you kind of get a little bit more of a closer bond with the fans. People start getting a lot more um, closer, and the songs, just everything, kind of just ramped up as we went through the seasons, as we went through the leagues, and won more and more games. You know the the energy and the noise became unbelievable, and you know we even used to sing them as players in the dressing room to each other. You know, when we used to sit there waiting for Graham for a meeting um, in the morning, sometimes we would just start singing and, and chanting the songs that were on the terrace on the Saturday afternoon. So it, it, it was it was part of us all. And uh, going back to your song there, would you drive a lorry or a van? 
<laughs> um, I'm probably a bad man. <laughs> but no, that was obviously your song at Stevenage, and that was the one that was, yeah, like sung for throughout the whole time, really, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it was, it was, it was a very nice thing, and you know, I had this, um, I actually had this discussion the other day with uh, with Charlton um, and some of the fans, and in, in a little chat that we was having on on the co commentary, and. Um, you know, they they mentioned about the song and stuff, and I actually said that you, as a player, you can go through a lot of clubs, um, or you can have one club um, throughout your whole career. I said, and it's very rare that you actually get a song sung about you. Um, so you know, no matter any any song that that is sung about me, um, I accept and 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 I'm very thankful for because you know some players do go through a whole whole career without having a song sung by by their supporters. And then we've got a message here from Rye. Obviously, this is going to go back to what I was going to ask you before. Um, also, that he said about your dislocated your ankle uh, with the injuries there. Um, so what was that like? Obviously, you know, to, to know you were going to be out of action for a while. And obviously, you know, I think you came back, was it sooner than expected as well? Yeah. So, I mean, this this is this is a, obviously a, a very big point in my, uh, in my career and a, and a big time that, you know, actually still affects me now the injury just with you know things like within my foot and the achiness and, and bits and bobs so you know it, it's gone throughout my whole career um at the time I was very young I was 21 I think it was 2021 and I kind of I got told the surgeon actually told me he kind of said look you know I'm not not sure whether you'll be able to sort of play back football again at, at that level that you were playing um but because I was so young I kind of ignored him um and you know I, I had that mentality of you know just carry on just work hard and, and and you'll be fine um and I was very lucky managed to like you say get back I got back a lot earlier than than planned um because I, I am that type of player that you know, I do I do a lot of work away from football, not just just at the football ground, um, to make sure I keep myself fit and healthy and all the rest of the stuff. So, um, yeah, it was it was very nice to come back, and I actually I'm pretty sure I scored as well um, on my comeback uh, game coming off. The I think it was, was it was it your comeback game or the game after? It was not too long after, anyway. Yeah, I think it, it might yeah. have been the, the game after. I think it was Wimbledon um, when I scored as well, which was which was very fitting. Um, and very nice from you know all the players as well coming over and, and congratulating me for for you know, for being out for I think all in all I think it was about six I think I was back actually playing my, I think the first game that I came back playing was within six or seven months. Um, yeah, I think was, it was about yeah about that, and it was you know yeah. the the injury itself. I remember it, it was a nasty injury, and oh, yeah. we thought you were going to be out for you know at least a year, maybe more. Yeah, no, it, it well that I think that injury you are supposed to kind of be out for at least a year, really. Um, and when we you, when you do come back, you're never kind of the same player that that you were when you left. Um, and I was actually in 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 really good form at the time before before it all happened. Um, but what was actually really nice was that I was actually able to finish that season. Um, you know, some players that do get injured and, and they, they're out for the rest of the season and they don't actually play again until the following season. But it was actually quite nice to, as nice as it could be to have such a serious injury, to play the same season. Yeah, and then um, you were involved. Were you involved in the trophy um, wins as well? One of the trophy wins, one or two of the trophy games? Yeah, I was in I was in two of the trophy games as well, which, which was very nice. The season... I signed um, at Stevenage the year before they had won the first trophy final, um, and then yeah, so then I was involved in I was involved in the win, um, and then the loss as well. So that 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 was a shame, but at least you know I've had had two outings, and then I got a win under my belt. Yeah, and then you, you know you look at those Wembley games; it's just to play at Wembley, isn't it? you know, a special um, occasion in, in itself uh, for, for any player, really, and especially a player that is playing, you know, in conference-level uh, football. Yeah, you know, those trophy games are fantastic, really. To be able to play at Wembley at the time, 
you know, when Wembley was just kind of had been built and, and all the rest of the hype around it, it um it was a fantastic trophy and, and a competition to to be involved in and, and a great opportunity to play at Wembley. Um obviously now I look back and I look at the Old Trafford game and, and actually I'm I'm actually quite thankful that it was at Old Trafford. Um because obviously you you don't every game's at Wembley, whereas it's actually quite nice to have played at, you know, a different massive, massive ground and, and you know, an iconic stadium. So it it was nice that game actually as well. It's also quite nice to say that we were the only team playing at Old Trafford that day to win a trophy because they lost the Champions League final, didn't they, as well? Yes, yeah, no, it was uh, it was very nice. <laughs> they lost. Uh, who were they? Who did they lose to? Was it Barcelona? I can't remember now. I think it probably. Yeah, I think it was Barcelona. Yeah. So, uh, but that was you know cracking um, goal from from John as well, John Mourinho, and he, uh, you know, I've heard stories about Moose um, and the kind of person that he was, sort of uh, the main sort of joker of the group, and you know, what was yeah. it like being uh, you know alongside players like him and and Bozzy and. You know some of the guys that you played in midfield with. Yeah, you know, listen, they the the whole the whole squad. To be honest with you, was was fantastic. We all, you know, there's there's you you click with certain players, um, but as a whole, the whole group was very united because we were all in the same boat. We were all training from nine till five. <laughs> we were all you know doing all the doing all the all the other bits, um, and we were all winning and successful together. So it's only inevitable that you are going to become very close friends on and off the pitch. Um, Moose was great um, because obviously he came in a little bit later as well. Um, and he fitted straight in with the, with the camp and him and Stacey Long were, were very, very good together. A very good duo act, um, which entertained us on many occasions. So, you know, everyone played their part, you know, um, Bozzy was, Bozzy was very quiet, um, but would do his talking on the pitch. Um, so yeah, so no, it was it was very good. Every everyone, everyone, I would say, you could go through the whole list of squad and players, and you could individually pick what that person contributed to the team on on and off the pitch. And then you, uh, you know, you um, played in the game against Cambridge as well. Obviously, that season when we beat York. Um, just before that, we played Cambridge in the, the playoffs. So did that give the, the players any sort of motivation for, you know, going on and winning the league? Uh, the follow- well, it, was, it was the following season, wasn't it? It was the following season, yeah. It, it, that game that game was very, very strange. Very strange game, that was. Um, we kind of... I don't think we thought it was done, but we probably wasn't... Uh, I don't know it's it's hard to think really it just it just didn't go for us that day just it didn't really didn't just go for us um and although it was a step backwards i actually think it probably helped us like you say that we went on to win the trophy because we had to get some silverware that season because of the success that we had had throughout the season um but then i also think it made us aware and and learn we all learn i think as a as a team and as a squad and as a management staff actually what it takes to win the league losing in that player final because we knew we were the better team than cambridge yet when it comes to playoffs it, it it's a lottery and i think it was kind of like from the start of the next season i remember graham and and the coaching staff and everyone being very much like we do not want to go through playoffs ever again. Like we we win this league and, and and that's it, sort of thing. So from day one, it was very much there's one team that go up automatic and it's gonna be us because we're not gonna go through the, the playoffs again. Yeah, and then obviously, you know, it was a, a big league as well. There was some big teams in there, Oxford and Luton and you know, uh, to have the um thing with Chester City as well, um come the end of the season. So it was uh a little bit of a, a strange season, the way we got promoted. I know we won by a fair distance in the end, but um, there were some big teams in there that were giving us, uh, you know, challenging us until the last few weeks as well. Yeah, I mean, that that was just kind of... We we always used to just concentrate on ourselves. And, and that was, I think, what, one of the best things that we could have ever possibly done is that we, we always went about 
our business and and we always left it to graham to you know do all the the other the other bits and bobs you know with talking to the other clubs and and all the mind games and and we just ever used to just concentrate and make sure that we've done enough in training to to just kind of win that next game and that's all we could do yeah so we've got another message here from russ um during your career, who was the best player that you played with and also against as well? Mm. I'd probably say against would obviously have to probably be Gareth Bale. <laughs> um, that that would be probably one of the best players that, that I've ever played against and, and you probably would have witnessed that. Um, to play with... Um, th- there's, a couple, there's a couple that kind of spring to mind um for me that are sort of that are playing now that have retired and you know the likes of when I was at Bolton I got I got to play with Emil Heskey towards the end of his career but you know when you're when you're training and playing with people like that you although they're at the end of their career they they have they still you still see what they had and what they they've got um so you're able to kind of steal all of those those sort of things um the likes of when I was at Cholton as a, as a as a young pro, you know, the training with people like Paolo Canio, you know, Danny Murphy, all of those, the likes of those Scott Parker, those sort of players that you kind of, when I was younger, you you appreciate more now when you look back and think, oh gosh, yeah, actually I was training and playing with these sort of players. Um, so yeah, so I mean, they they were probably up there with with the better better players that I've played with. It's not bad. They're all international, so that's that says something for itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, even, um, even like the on. likes of um, the likes of like uh, Dale Stevens at at, um, at Charlton that I played with, that's at Brighton now in, in the Premier League and stuff. That those sort of players that when you're playing with them, you kind of just you kind of take for granted. You know they're good players, but you don't realise the uh, you know that once they go up, they've got that extra step. They've got that extra level that when you're playing with them, you think, oh, actually, yeah, you could easily go and play on. Um, and uh, he has, thankfully, because he's a talent. So we've got another question here, actually, going back to Cholton. Um, what did you think of Lyle Taylor and a few others not extending their contract to cover the games that are now being played? It's a little bit of a, a yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a touchy one. <laughs> um, so, I mean... It's very hard because I don't understand their situations um, outside of football um, and what's going on around those sorts of things. For me personally, I think you finish your contract, um, whether that be a two month contract. I I can understand that they don't want to extend their contract um, and play on that. That's fine. But I think that you've signed the contract till a certain date. And I think that you really should adhere to that um and finish the finish the contract you know I, I always look at it and i always think worst case scenario like why don't you just finish the contract and just then say look you know i'm, I'm done I'm, uh, you know thank you but but i'm not going to sign the extension um i think it was more to make a little bit of a i don't know a scene maybe with it um i think obviously as well lee bowyer isn't one to mix up his words and, and he, he's a very open and honest manager and he says it how it, how it is really to be honest with you and I think it's probably come up um, and also with Cholton as well in the backroom staff there there's nobody around um, with what's going on with the the owners and stuff at the club there, there isn't anybody around to actually manage those situations um, they probably would have been managed a lot different if there would have been someone higher up to actually say, right, no, actually, you're going to play to the end of your contract and then that's it, you're not going to extend it, you know, not allowing the player and the manager to, you know, come out and and say their views of things and and stuff. They may have just nipped it in the bud a little bit and and it probably would have gone under the radar. Um, And obviously, you know, you mentioned about Charlton there. What was it like? You did a bit of co-commentary with uh, the the Charlton guys the other week. What was that like um, being, you know, sort of this side of the mic, I should say? Yeah, no, it was, it was very good, actually. Um, it was very nice that it, it's it's more it's more for Charlton. So 
that's always nice because you've got your own kind of stories that go with being at Charlton, having your time there, spending your time there, the players that are still already, already there, the management staff that are there. And so that, that was nice to have stories on that. Um, if you if you probably were to do it as a, you know, unbiased situation, it, it would be probably a little bit tougher. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's good. It's nice to to put your own opinion across on games, I think, as well. You know, some people, it's a love or hate, isn't it, really? Some people like some commentators, some people hate some commentators. And it's purely just giving your opinion of a game. And it's actually, obviously, if you can view it and see it, it's different. But if you're doing it for radio, you people can't see it so you're basically their eyes and ears um so yeah so it's good it's, it's a learning curve and I'm actually I'm actually going to do another one on Saturday they play Wigan on Saturday um so that'll be a very big game yeah that's a huge game and uh Clive Tilsley has obviously now just um been taken off of ITV do you fancy yourself as an ITV uh commentator <laughs> I could be the main. I could be the main commentator on ITV doing all the England and Champions League games. <laughs> you never know. See how it goes with Charlton, first of all. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but no. Uh, in terms of, let's have a look here. You scored your first goal for the club against Barrow. Um, so what was that like? Because that was actually your first professional goal, um, wasn't it as well? If you if do you know, remember, do you know what? <laughs> in all in all honesty. You've just brought back something that I never knew. <laughs> so <laughs> that that for me, I'm going to have to write that one down because when people do ask me where was your first ever goal, at least I know now it was against Barrow. <laughs> you don't really remember much about that um, that game. Then, oh, do you? I actually no? was it was it was it home or away? I don't remember that. That's going to stump me now. Um, oh sorry. gosh, no, Let's I, have li- a look. I Let's literally not remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, did I'm I write trying it down to there? think. It must have been away. Yeah, I think it was away. I think it was away. Yeah, was it? A... I think see. it was away. And I'm trying to think. It may have been an like an absolute tapping as well. Yeah, possibly. I think it was um, an empty goal. Oh, was I it? I think it was an empty goal. I think someone squared it, and it was just an empty goal. And I just literally just just tapped it in. Um, but what a, what a game to to score! Right? All that travelling miles away staying overnight and then and then getting something to come back on so that was probably quite nice for me probably quite nice but you don't really remember it so you don't know <laughs> no <laughs> um so uh what was i going to say uh what are your thoughts on the current situation with Stevenage? if you know too much about it um uh implying in what what sense uh, so in terms of the whole Macclesfield, Stevenage, um, and then sort of Stevenage in general, with the whole, uh, you know, change in a number of managers this season, we've got four managers uh, and three wins and, you know, Rev's in charge now. So what do you sort of know about the whole situation in both of them? Um, I mean, obviously, it's it's not nice to, to see managers sort of coming and going um for whatever reason whether it be result dependent or you know anything else apart from that as as a club you know it'd, it'd be nice to probably get a little bit of stability and and, and you know get one manager may, if it may be rev um that takes them forward would be nice to actually be sort of give, given a little bit of a chance uh, to to try and get something together again and get a nice run obviously regarding next season uh, all I do know is I think that they're back at the end of this month um, to start pre-season. But who knows? I don't think they're going to know what league they're going to be in come the end of this month, which is a shame, I think, because any club that's going back to pre-season should know what league they're potentially going to be in. Um, the, only, the only thing I would say is that I've seen a lot of, um, a lot of sign-ins a good sign-ins, which I think is a good sign because as a club, if you're you know, still able to be signing players in, in this situation with you know the pandemic and the global situation, I think it's a it's a good sign from a club to say that you know you've still got stability, that financially you're looking after the club in the correct ways. Because when you look now at the likes of Charlton, the likes of Wigan, you know, all of these clubs that you know, you you pro- you might admire admire being up in the 
championship and, and higher up in the leagues, but actually financially they're not secure at all. Um, so it's actually quite nice to see a club be able to do that. But you've signed some very good players so far, um, and it'll be nice for Revs to probably get hold of them and and see what see what he can bring out of them. Yeah. So you know, you said he's he's signed four players so far, um, but he's released. I think he's got rid of twelve or thirteen from the end of last season, uh, including you know Dean Parrott and Byram and Kennedy and uh, a couple of others that were signed by Dino um, at the start of the season and, you know, the end of last season, uh, Ben Nugent and a few others have left the club as well. Um, but uh, yeah, there's, he signed a few players. Uh, do you know anything much about those four guys that he signed or not really? No, I don't, I don't know much, much about them to be honest. Um, I know, I know the striker that was obviously from Dover because of playing against him um, last season and stuff, but, other than other than that, I don't know much much about the players. Um, but yeah, like you say, that the, the twelve that are gone, I'm sure that were probably out of contract. So it was probably more of a situation that maybe negotiations and and the, with the pandemic, the the financial situation maybe weren't able to offer as as many players as they would like to have. Um, but I think it'll be quite nice for rest to start afresh with you know his own players that he wants to bring in um you know and and the club wants to bring in and i think that'd be quite a nice thing for him and then if you look at the the coaching staff he's got lenny lawrence on his coaching staff he's still got uh, mark sampson with him now as well so some experienced names there and you know lenny lawrence has done it with newport he was uh, the managerial managerial advisor with them and he's now come to stevenage um, and he, obviously he's a, a big name in the game and sampson on the you know the international side with the women's uh, team and things like that. And obviously he had a spell with Steen, which is a caretaker manager earlier this season as well. Yeah, I think Steven is, I like what Steven is doing in that sense, to be honest. They, they always get a manager with, you know, I say not so much experience, but you know, that, that that's young in the game, that's vibrant. And they always tend to bring somebody with a lot more experience um, alongside just to kind of help and, a nudge along the way um, and I think that's quite a nice a nice way to be really a nice a nice balance to have between a manager a coach and an and advisor and stuff um, so hopefully thank, this works this season whatever whatever league they're, they're to be in um, but I think that all the success that the club have had um, it would be it would be a shame to you know to be go back into the conference um, after everything that's gone on um, throughout the years yeah, it's, it's difficult because obviously at the end of last season, the club were up there challenging just outside the playoffs. And then the, you know, mm. this season was just it's just a freak season. You know, you don't expect yeah. there to be um, a pandemic. You don't expect there to be a halt in the season. You don't expect the club to be so far down the, the footballing pyramid. It's just a strange season in, you know, every kind of sense of it, really. Yeah, it's it's not it's not been it was a strange season for for myself as well to be honest with you at Ebsley. You know, it it started not not so great just in football terms, um, and then it started to basically sort of when once the pandemic hit, you we started to just turn it just before, um, and then the pandemic hit, and and then suddenly you're like you're left in a situation where you think, well, hang on a second, I'm, you know, there's still eight games or or nine games to play and. You know, there's there's a lot of points to play for still, and it, yeah, it was a very very strange season for everybody. It's just a it's just a shame that it has to end the way it's ended. Um, and if it means relegation, then you know, over the season, it's unfair that it's not over the season and it's only over kind of three quarters of the season. Yeah, and um, we've got a question here. What was it like playing alongside Lady? <laughs> Yeah, very good. Scott Scott's a Scott's a very um good, honest pro, like, you know, on and off the field as well. So to play to play with Scott on the field was to have a somebody left footed um and to be able to get up and down, you know, it, it's it's very, very key on, on that side and, and he managed that side well, you know, where whoever played in front of Scott Scott was always behind making sure that you know it was all done properly and and they were in the right positions because with with Graham it was all about positional play um so you know yeah he had to do a lot down that that left hand side where it 
to be going forward, backwards or getting people in. Um, but he's a great lad. He's a very, very, very good lad, you know, on and off the field. Um, and I still stay in contact with Scott a lot now. So very good. And I spoke to Scott as well. And uh, yeah, you know, he's a, a great guy. I used to, um, after the games, we all used to hook up at the billet, you know, all the fans alongside Chris. And, yeah. and we used to see him most Saturdays and, um, and have a, a good chat with him. So, yeah. Yeah, oh, nice. Because he, he was living up this way, wasn't he? Um, up in Stevenage. So it was quite, a, it was a nice thing for them to all go and get. They, they, they spent a lot of time together, um, all the lads that, that live quite local. Yeah. Um, so what was I going to ask you? Yeah. So in terms of yourself, so are you out of contract with Ebbsfleet at the moment or are you still, uh, still under a contract with them? So I had another year and they offered me another year because of I played I played over 32 games last year. So I had another contract, um, but they they want they're still full time, uh, even though obviously they're going to be in the conference south now. Um, <clears throat> but I've I set up a company um, about a year a year ago, two years ago, um, during sort of just with my brother in law and stuff with health and life insurance and business protection um, through Vitality. So I've been doing a lot of that on and off the like off the field sort of thing. Um, and I think it was kind of become a time where I just thought with the pandemic, with everything that's happened financially for a lot of um, clubs, money isn't going to be there anymore. And, you know, I was very lucky for the last couple of seasons um, at Ebb's Fleet, to be honest. Um, and I'm grateful for that. And I just thought that now may be the right time to, you know, maybe go part time with football and concentrate on the company. Um, whereas obviously throughout my whole career, football has been my main priority and my, my main source of income. Whereas this year, I kind of felt my company is going to be my main source and the football is probably just going to be more of an extra added bonus. Um, so, yeah, so I'm probably going to be going part time um, next year and then concentrating on, on work. OK, um, so we've had a, a few questions on uh twitter in regards to sorry, facebook in fact in regards to would you ever consider coming back to stevenage obviously you know you're saying about going part-time so that probably kind of sinks that ship does it or is it still something you consider you know maybe no, with a coach no, listen, I, or... well to be to be honest with you the only i, I would 100 percent to answer your question i would 100 percent go back to stevenage because um i love the training ground i love the place i love the ground i love the fans like I loved everything about that and, and there's a lot of a lot of you know my time in my career was spent there um so yeah so I would I would 100% do that because I love to be in the conference let's say as, as a club for a club like Stevenage to be in the, the National League um to have the facilities that they have is is unbelievable um so for me definitely because it's only going to make you a better player and 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 play well each season. Um, obviously, for Stevenage, it's it's more about wh whatever direction that they're going in, um, and whether they would actually want me. But yeah, no, I would. The only reason why I say I would go part time is because I know that financially, a lot of clubs aren't going to be offering the money that you know I would probably quite like. Um, so yeah, so it's just about kind of accepting. The only reason why I say part time is accepting the fact that some clubs aren't going to be able to afford what I would like to have now, which is why football may have to take a back seat. Okay, yeah, that that makes sense. Um, so in terms of that uh, that game, it was Barrow one, Stevenage three. By the way, that game when you scored your your first goal. Um, so you, you know you can no, use that nice. as a, you can use that as a reference now. Um, <laughs> but uh, in terms of um, your opinion from the, um, the the playoffs, how did you sort of see? Have you seen much of the playoffs? The games between Wickham and uh, who was it they played? Oxford at the other day and uh, Northampton and Exeter. Have you seen much of them? I saw I saw a little bit of the. Um... The first playoff games with Wickham and stuff, which was great to see, obviously Darius um, out there and, and and doing his thing um, because you know he's he's had a lot of um, troubles throughout the last few seasons. 
and stuff with injuries and and potential retirement and stuff like that. Yeah, so that that's was, what that I heard. Was it was, uh, I can't remember who it was I spoke to. Was it um, what? Who was it I spoke to the other day? Uh, Tom Pett, and he said that Darius was, you know, at the end of last season, he was thinking about giving up football together and and going down a different route, and then now he's going to be playing Championship. So that is a you know a great story in itself. As much as people will look at the Akinbemo <laughs> one with with Klopp, for example, when the whole WhatsApp. It's uh, you know a, a big story on <laughs> Darius's part as well. No, no, I think you know, and he he's changed a lot, Darius, um, throughout the last couple of couple of seasons and stuff with with regards to the way he is as a, as the way he lives his life outside of football and, and inside football. So um, it's very very nice to see somebody achieve what he's he's achieved, knowing that he. You know, potentially was going to retire at the end of end of last season. Yeah, that's right. And you know, hopefully he can stay with Wickham and uh, get um, you know uh, a good contract with them and and do well for himself. And yeah, be nice for yeah. him. Yeah. Definitely. So let's have a look if there's anything more that needs covering. Probably not an awful lot. Um, so let's see. Uh, yeah, so in terms of your when you when you left to go to Charlton, was that difficult at all? Um, you know, leaving Stevenage, or was it just the the right time for you to to move on? Um, so for me, sorry, the um, oh, my my son's about my son's about to come in the house, so he's gonna he's gonna get a massive loud sound. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, um, we we won't be so, too long now. Anyway, that's fine. That's all right. right. No worries. Um, so yeah, so the the Stevenage to Cholton um, was very, I would say, it was it was a hard situation in that you know, it was a club that I've been at for so long, but then on the other hand, um, it was something that Stevenage and myself couldn't turn down to be honest, um, because really and truly, like the the financial aspect of the the move worked for both Stevenage and myself so yeah that that was kind of like a one of those things that it also I had unfinished business at Charlton um been released as a as, as a young pro um I kind of felt I had unfinished business as well so it, th- all those things played played a part in it to be honest with you Okay, and then obviously you went on for a, a decent fee as well in the end. So you know, Steve was where I would get signed and and kind of invest as well. Well, that 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 was it. I mean, that's that's why you've got such a good training ground. I've heard <laughs> due, due to me leaving. Well, uh, you know, probably not just you. Probably a few others as well. Me and me and me and Bo- me and Bozzy, I think it was that season, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that season it was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, yeah. like joking aside and stuff, obviously it's um yeah, it's uh, obviously great that you were able to go back to Cholton and make a name for yourself there again and, and kind of rewrite the the history books in terms of obviously, you know, you started off there and stuff and kind of to go back and play some games for them there in was it the championship and stuff as well? Yeah, yeah, it was all the championship as well. I had like three or four years in the in the championship with them. So it was it what was quite fitting was that obviously you get released from a club. Um, and then you know you have a bit of success with another club and and learn your trade and 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 learn your your ability and how you play and then that that same club that released you then have to pay a fee for you to come back it's quite a nice sort of you know you're you're in the driving seat whereas before you know you were kind of being released whereas now they're asking you to come back and your demands are a little bit nicer going back the other way um you know, and and for instance, the fans, you know, because they do still look at me as kind of one of their academy graduates, really, that I spent my whole time at the club as an academy player. Um, so, yeah, so it, it was nice. It was, it was very nice to go back there. And again, like you say, to have all those seasons in the championship as well and play that many games in the championship is, is always a nice thing that, you know, when I do retire and, and finish playing football and to look back on and to, to be able to have said, you know, I've played that many games throughout my whole career um, is nice. And to have all the success that I've had with it, which many players could play, you know, hundreds and hundreds of games and, and not have any successful medals or trophies to show for it. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we'll, we'll start to wrap things up really now. So what are your, your overall thoughts on the work that Steamers have been doing in the local community with the, the pandemic? Obviously, the sandwich delivery run um, that the club have been you know, getting volunteers out doing. I, um, yeah, I, I, think, I think it's been absolute. Yeah, I think it's been absolutely amazing, to be honest with you. Um, and it's so it's so I mean, as much as you, you might not you might not know um, Phil a lot, but it, it's it goes hand in hand with with the type of person Phil Wallace is, to be honest with you, um, and the way that, you know, his family are and, and stuff like that, because that is something that they always think of first you know they they're they're very thoughtful people in in that sense and always looking after other other people before you know themselves and stuff and i think it's great that they've got all the players involved um you know i'm not sure some of them can make good sandwiches but still (laughs) they uh, they can deliver them well yeah that's uh you know it's great to have the players i think revs has been involved a few times scott cuthbert the captain and you know a few others um from uh, from around the club, lots of fans getting involved and stuff as well. So no, it's great to to have that kind of community feel. And, and then, you know that's what the club are known for. The club are known for being that kind of community, family based club anyway. And they've, you know, as I said to to Tom Pett yesterday, um, that they've won awards for the sort of stuff that they, they they've been doing as well, whether it's in this or um, other sort of family based stuff as well. Exactly, and I think that I think that's a credit to the club, to be honest with you, uh, and the way, like I said, and the way that the clubs run with, you know, the the people in charge, because they're not just, you know, thinking of football, football. We must make as much money as we can in football and stuff. You know, they are looking at the wider picture and the community within Stevenage, because, you know, Stevenage, you know, we kind of we've managed to put, you know, like they say, Stevenage on the map as such, you know, and, and being such a, a great town. Um, and bringing everyone together that's the only way that you you actually breed success yeah definitely and then if you look at um just uh, one or two final things as well obviously you played alongside Mitchell Cole um what was it like playing alongside Mitchell when you know obviously the game um his memorial game against uh, the West Ham 11 when all the boys from West Ham came down <clears throat> yeah obviously it's a, it's a very sad um situation to to have to meet together like I said before you know it tends to be people's deaths and funerals that that people get together and and stuff um and you know that was that was another occasion that although it wasn't it was a sad occasion to having to be playing because of the something that's happened it was also a very memorable and 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 a well managed and and well you know great day to actually support what had happened um, you know, in, in, in the memory of Mitch. Um, Mitch as a player um, on his day was just unbelievable, unstoppable. And, you know, the amount of times I used to see him run down that left wing and go past people like they wasn't even there. You kind of think, why on earth are you even in this league? Um, yeah, and if you look at other days, there was, uh, there, was, there was a game I went to against Eastbourne away um, and it was 6-0. I think this was before your yeah. time. And um, he scored, oh, maybe you were injured. I can't remember. But he scored three goals in like nine minutes or something. And it was ridiculous. Yeah. Like, it was, it was a crazy game. And, you know, that's the yeah, kind of was, I, was there, I was there at that game. Yeah, but that, that's what I mean. Like, he, he was just, but then there were other days and games that you look and you think, you, you, you're still, you, there's no point in you being out here. Like, he was kind of one of those. And, you know, the amount of times it was quite funny that, you know, he, he was always well known for his fitness wasn't wasn't the greatest. Um, you know, so once Graham had come in, it was it was very much like, right, Mitch, you need to get fit. You need to do this. You need to do that. But then, you know, some days he would just go out there and, and you know, do what he would do on a football field. And you think, do you know what? You know, you, you, you just get by in the week. And, and as long as you do that every Saturday, then we'll all be happy. <laughs> That's right. And you, you mentioned there that sometimes he wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be in the forefront of the play. But then, you know, the second half of the games, like Wembley, for example, the, the first trophy final, which was obviously the year before you signed. Um, first yeah. half, you know, pretty much all of the strikers and attacking players there were anonymous for us. And then second half, we got Mitch coming on. I think he got man in the match and, and Dobbo and Morrison yeah. scoring uh, at the end there as well. And, you know, that's the kind of players that we had because a lot of them were still there when you signed yeah. as well. 
Yeah, yeah, they were all there. Yeah, pretty much when, when I signed. So, I um, mean, you know, I got to I got to see what all of them were like. Um, and they all had their they all had their, their their pros and cons of obviously you know the the Dobbo and and Mitch they were very much sort of similar that some some one half you could have Dobbo playing and, and not do very well and then Mitch could come on and, and do the same and then it'd be vice versa you know the, the suddenly you you get there's a bit of competition so they have to start performing each week. And then the, the likes of Steve Morrison as well obviously you know what a, what a goal machine he was he was. He could have um, 80 minutes of doing nothing and then go and bag two goals in the final 10. Exactly. And you know what? The amount of times and, and, and arguments that we would have as, as, a, as a club and players with, with Steve and stuff, you know, sometimes when he wouldn't even sort of try a leg in training sometimes. and But then you come Saturday and, you know, sometimes you, you wouldn't do much in a game and then bag two, like you say, and you just go, well, cheers. Cheers, Steve. <laughs> you know, thanks for the three points, and and you kind of were off. You kind of just accepted the way that he, you know, trained and, and the way he played the game, just because you knew that, you know, you put in a couple of crosses and and he was there to to nod them in and win you a game. Um, so you kind of accept the other side of the game, really. And that's right, because you know, the if you go back to that Cambridge first leg, he scored two in that game, and you know, um, then obviously the second leg. Well, we, we, he missed the the second leg. Yeah, he missed the, he missed an absolute one on one sitter, didn't they? And then that's and right. Then we yeah, yeah. went on to lose. So I, I, I gave, we gave him some stick for that. Didn't want to say too much about it, but uh, I know uh, <laughs> he did. Uh, he did miss a sitter in the second leg, and he, you know, I'm sure even yeah. he would have he would have put himself to to score that one. Yeah, exactly. No, I I would have put my money on it, my house on it to, to score as well, but he didn't. That's right. And that's just when you know your luck's out sometimes, I guess, as well. Um, exactly. But, uh, exactly. Yeah, so we've, we've spoken about that, um, about the, the players that have signed for the club. So what are your thoughts on the playoff games and, you know, the championship games and Premier League games all being closed, uh, closed doors, behind closed doors games at the moment? Um, obviously, it's kind of... Uh, um, I think it's... It. I mean, I think it's, it, it's kind of looked upon as a mini league. Um, you know, mini nine sort of games or whatever they are to play. I uh, I think it's good in the fact that they've done everything they can to get the games on um, and finished. I don't think it probably, at the time that they were talking about football coming back, I don't think it was a, a very big priority in what was going on in the world. Um, but looking at what's happened now, subsequently, I think it was probably a good decision. Um, and it's nice to, you know, have a finish to the season for these clubs, even though it, the next season is obviously going to have some sort of effect, as in whether they have a break or whether they go straight on, um, because there hasn't really been any talk of next season until everything's finished this season. So there's still another, <clears throat> I think there's another three games, is there, in the Championship? Uh, yeah, Premiership's another three, um, Championship, I think it's about the same, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so, you know, once that's happened, you'll then find out a lot about next season. Um, I, it's not nice for the fans, in, in all honesty. When I was there co-commentating the other day, you are kind of waiting the whole time for fans to enter. It's kind of like, oh, they're holding, they holding everyone up outside or something because, you know, that's always that, that coincides with football, I think. You know, it, it's not the same without having fans there. No, that's very true. And... Uh... You know the the playoffs and stuff. Being at Wembley, you know that's a, a big time for a lot of these fans that you know might not get the the chance to see their club at Wembley too often. Whether that's Wickham or Oxford or um, Northampton or Exeter fans as well. So it's you know it's a shame that they're missing out. But as I said, it sort of needs must. Yeah, it, exactly. And I think that you know it, it's a disappointment. I, I mean, I, to be honest with you, there's a you know for instance Wickham. For fans, they'll probably be a little bit like, oh, well, you know, I've not managed to watch my club at Wembley and I might never see that again. But then on the other side, on the flip side of things, they've maybe been able to watch it on TV, but the next season, they've got a benefit of the fact that they're in a championship. Whereas the Oxford fans are probably going to say, oh, I didn't get to see my club at Wembley, but actually they lost anyway. So I probably wouldn't have had a nice day anyway. So it's kind of like, it's not a bad situation when you actually step back and think about it. 
Yeah, that's a, a good point, actually, what you just made there as well. Um, and obviously, you know, next season is is whatever it's going to be for for those clubs, whether they got promoted or are back in, you know, the, the league that they were in this season. Um, and it's just yeah. be good to have the fans yeah. back in uh, some capacity, um, whether exactly. it's full exactly. capacity or half or a third, whatever it may be. Yeah, definitely. I, you know, like we say, I think I think they're starting with twenty five percent, maybe, or something like that, um, or eighty percent um, of the capacity. Which I think for most clubs will be a benefit, no, no matter what. Really, whoever comes in will will be a benefit to the club financially. Most clubs, um, for League One down. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think that's just to see. That should probably cover the, the majority of everything I had here. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's that's everything, mate. To be honest, good, good, so good. We're all done, mate. So thanks a lot for that, and uh, we'll uh, hopefully have another couple of interviews lined up if you want to check them out. I don't know if you have seen any in the past, um, but they're up on my SoundCloud. Yeah, I think I saw Scott's recently. I'll send you. I'll send you the link over, and you can check some of them out. Yeah, send me the link. Okay, I'll have a look. Yeah, because Scott. Right. Is on no Robert worries. Robert thanks for your time, Robert. anyway. Cheers. Thanks, Laurie. See you later, mate. Yeah, Take care. Perfect. No worries. Speak to you soon. Bye now. Cheers, mate. Bye.